they cry just like the dogs. I can't really make them sleep. And I came to you, to your house. So he said, bring your kids. And he went, knock on all the doors in his neighbor. And he bring them all. So his wife said, like, your kids, like, they didn't eat yet. He said, don't worry. And he went to his horse, he slaughtered the horse, cook it all, and let everyone eat before even he tests the food. So he was a very generous guy. But we don't talk about Hatem al we're talking about his son, Ali bin Hatem al -Fai. He almost, at the same age with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was born almost 51 to 50, we are not sure, 51 to 54, before the immigration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So almost the same age with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his religion was al Kusi, which is, it's something between uh, Christianity and Judaism. They put it all together. There is no this religion anymore. It's named Abu Kusiyah. He was, that was his religion. And he was against Islam before. Because he was the leader of, of his people after his father. And he was against Islam. But subhanAllah, when he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that will be, that was be uh, the seventh of the Hijrah. Exactly. He went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he became Muslim. And the reason that he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a one fight, the Muslimin captured his sister. And then when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw his sister, he set her free. Because he said her father, he used to value the good manners. He was very generous, very good. He has a good manners. So he sent his sister free. And he didn't even like just say, go, you are free. He waited until some like a trustful tribe came to Al-Madina and he sent the sister with this tribe. So when Ali heard about this action from the Prophet he went to him. He just wanted to check, like, I didn't see the Prophet. So he wanted to see. And then the Prophet when he talked to him, he became Muslim. And he even told him, it's a very famous story, he told him, like, maybe you don't want to become Muslim because you, you, you see us, there is no money, and we are few, all people against us. But by Allah, the ilaha illahu, illa the, the money will be a lot in, in, in Muslims that you will not find people to take it. And you see we are a few people, but very soon you will see the castle of Kisra of the Persian Empire will be under our control. So subhanAllah, he said, like, because the leaders, usually the leaders, they against the doubt. They, they like wealth. They like to have the power. So when he saw like the Muslims in very low level, he thought maybe it's not a good religion for him. But the Prophet ﷺ said, if you think this, by Allah that will, will happen. So he became Muslim and he was fighting with the Muslim with his tribe, he was the, the leader of his tribe, and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu once about his father. Because the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned when he sent his daughter free that he has a good manner. So he asked the Prophet Sallallahu you know about my father? And he was very generous, very good person. Is Allah will give him ajr for his good deeds. So the Prophet Sallallahu replied and he said, he, your father, that means he got what he asked for. 
And the Prophet ﷺ meant that he got the mention of good deeds that he made. And subhanAllah, to this day, you will find in each country the stories of Hatam al -Tari. So the Prophet ﷺ said, he did it to let people know about him, about his generosity, and they, everyone know. So he got what he wants. So there is no ajr. That's why the intention is very important. And subhanAllah, just a proof of what the Prophet ﷺ said, there is another story that they said once there is uh, three people, one of them, An-Nabi Ghattubiyani, is a very famous poet, came to the area where Hatam al-Tai used to live. And he was, like, under his, uh, like, his father was still alive. So his father asked him to slaughter one sheep or any goat. But he went and he slaughtered all camels, all of them, whatever his father owned and provided. And then they asked him, they said, like, we are three, and like one God is more than enough for us. But he said, he said, I look to you, and you, like, you are three from a different tribes. He said, that's right. He said, I want you to go to your tribe and you say what, what I provide you. So he, he, he wants them to speak very good about him. And this one, he, he made a, a point about him. And himself, he, he used to make some points. Point, for, what do I say? Shut up. Shut. Yes. About his generosity. In the one, in the, in the one famous one, uh, Shut up date, he said about the wolf. He said, when we go, the wolf escape, and if he wait, I will feed him. He, he doesn't like that. The wolf doesn't need to steal from us. If he comes to us, I'll give him a goat. That's how, how generous he was. So, his son was also very generous, just like his father. And they said his mother was from a daughter from kings of Yemen. Now Sheikh Ahmed, you all wake up. <laughs> so, he was very generous and very good Muslim, alhamdulillah. And he reported this hadith that there is no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would speak to him privately. There is no turjuman, there is no interpreter between them. But subhanAllah, there is a lot of ahadith described there is some Muslims that will enter Jannah without without hisab, without anything, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not talk to them. Right? So why the Prophet sallallahu said, there is no one unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk to them. There is another hadith that there is a three kinds of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never talk to them and will never purify them and they have very bad punishment. Anyone knows? <coughs> so the the general rule that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk to each one and he will ask him about the sins that he did, the actions. And then, when he will start asking him, he would say, do you remember this sin that you did at that time in this place? He would say, yes. And they say, do you deny any of them? He would say, no. Do you have any excuse for it? any reason that you did this? He would say no. Until, as the Prophet ﷺ said, he would think, that's it. That's it. I will go to the hellfire right away. It's all the sins in the front of him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, 
satartuha laka fi dunya that i hidden this sins in, in the worldly life i will forgive it in this day and then you will enter the jannah but man nuqish al adab man nuqish al hisab uddib if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start going with the details not just like showing the sins this guy that means he's in trouble but again there are some people who escape this hisab that they will go directly to the heaven in the hadith that reported also in Bukhari the Prophet sallallahu said on the day of judgment he will see the prophets some prophets they only have one guy believing some of them they have two, three believe in them. And then he would see a lot of people just like black. He can't even see the, the end of it. And he would say, this is my nation. But Jibreel, he answered and he said, no. This is the Ummah of Musa, the nation of Musa. And then he asked him to look some other place. And he would see a lot of people. Just like black, a lot, a lot of people say, this is your nation. In the front of them, 70,000. They will enter the heaven without any judgment, right away. 70,000. Some of the scholars, they said, they are 70,000. Some, some others, they said, no, 70,000 is just a number that the Arab give. And they want, like, there is a lot of people. So some of them they said it's 70,000 person will enter the Jannah without any questioning, right away. On the day of judgment, on their way to the Jannah. And some, they said, no, this is a number that the Prophet ﷺ gave just to tell there is a lot of people will enter the Jannah without without his so, some of the Sahaba, they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who's these 70 people? Anyone knows the hadith? He said, هُمُ الَّذِينَ لَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ وَلَا يَتَطَيَّرُونَ وَلَا يَكْتَمُونَ وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ So they don't ask for a ruqya from others, and they don't have bad, bad luck, they don't think, oh, this is bad luck, this is bad luck. لا يتطيرون ولا يكتمون They don't use the fire to, as a medicine. And وعلى ربهم يتوكلون And they rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on their dog. So one of the Sahaba, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, oh, Prophet of Allah, his name is Rukash, he said, oh, Prophet of Allah, ask Allah, to let me be one of them. And he said, May Allah make you one of them. And there is other Sahabi, he said, Me too. I want to be with them. So the Prophet said, Sadaqaka biha akasha. He said it first. <laughs> so he got it. And this is subhanAllah. The scholars, they said, When you find something good, start. Hasten to it. Try to be fast. Because other one can, can really do it before you. Like if you, find, if you find someone in need, go and give him some money. Otherwise, someone else will cover his needs. Right? Don't think a lot. And even when you think, the shaitan will come to you unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover him, bring him very close to him, and then he will talk to him. And this is kind of honor. That's why there are some people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never talk to them. Never talk to them. One of them they said, Shaykh Hunzad. An old man still committing adultery. Committing zina. This is one of them. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never talk. 
and Malikun Kadab, a king but a liar, and also Ailun Mustakir, one guy in need but there is a kip, there is arrogance inside his heart. He's showing off on people even though he's very poor. There is some people, they don't have money, but when they talk and when they walk, when they talk, when they dress, there is a lot of arrogance inside them. The couple. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not go to these three kinds of people. And there is a lot of hadith mentioned some other groups as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk with them, with the believers, and He will remind them about their deeds, and then He will forgive. <coughs> so the Prophet ﷺ said, at that time, you will look to the right side, you will find nothing except what you provide, your deeds what you did, what you work for in this dunya. You will look to the left side, you will find only your deeds. Except what you did. Nothing except what you did. And you will look between your hands and you will find the hellfire. Imagine, nothing except the deeds. And this is very scary because the hellfire in front of you, you will jump. The Prophet said, at that time, you can avoid the hellfire with the half of days that you give in a gym. Half days. How much does it work? Nothing. These days is nothing. What about before? In the Medina, what does it work half of days? If someone finds a date on the floor, he will not even bother to take it, maybe. It's, it's worthless. But the Prophet said, with the right intention, with the right intention, if you give the half of date for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will save you from the hellfire. Not even this. But he said, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Kalima tayyib. Very good word. Maybe you see a poor guy, but you don't have money to give him anything. If you just say, oh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make a dua for him. It's a kalima tayyib. It's a good word. May Allah help you. And if you need anything, I can, inshallah, help you. I don't have money, but I can do some effort for you. I can do some research. I can find a job. I can do this and this. Try to be with him. You can't really help him with the money, but at least be good to him. Intention. You have the same words that you can't afford even a half of it. But these days, I don't think anyone who can't really afford a half of it is like less than a few cents. And there is SubhanAllah, there is another hadith that talk about the days when the mother of the believers, Aisha, she mentions in the Prophet that there is a lady gave to her two daughters, one date each, and then she had a one date herself. And she wanted to eat it, and before she ate it, she found that the two daughters really like the dates. She wants to put the date on her mouth, but she looked to the daughters, they, they ate the dates and they liked it. So she put it to half and she gave it to the daughters. Do you know what the Prophet said? He said, Ghafar Allah. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for give or help their sins for this action. Giving your children a half of it. So, subhanAllah, 
That's why sadaqah is, is very important. If we count how, how the sadaqah is valuable to us, you will never imagine. First of all, it's, it's a proof of iman. And some people, they, they, they don't really know that the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالصَّدَقَ بُرْهَانٌ That a salatu nur, وَالصَّدَقَ بُرْهَانٌ That salat is a light on the day of judgment, and your charity is a proof of your iman in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why it's a proof? Because you do for the sake of Allah. No one will pay for something unless he believes or he wants something. You pay from your money if you want someone to talk about good about you. So you pay for something. But if you pay and, and hide it, don't let anyone talk about you. That's when you believe in Allah, that He is the only one looking to you and see you. So you're doing it as a proof of Iman for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Was And sometimes if we have, if we neglect in, in our, in our uh, job, in our obligatory, because we have two kinds of charity. We have the obligatory charity, which is the zakat, and we have the optional charity, which is as sadaqah. So, if there is some, if we pay the zakat, but we didn't do it properly, if there is any mistakes in it, the optional charity will cover up. Or, because the Prophet ﷺ said about this in, in the hadith, that the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will count us for is salah. If there is any neglect in our salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish us, but will ask the malaik. Does he have any nawafi, extra salah? There is, he will cover whatever he left from our side. And same with other farah. And the zakah one of them. And they said, the sadaqah wipe out the sayyat. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the sadaqah tutfi'u al-khati'ah kama yutfi'u al-ma' and na'ah. That the sadaqah, it just put out the, the sin just like the water do with, with the fire. Same thing. When there is a fire, you just have the water, put it on the fire, and be done. So if you do sin, follow it with the charity, with the sadaqah. Also, the Prophet wasallam said, as we mentioned the hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive to this lady by giving half of day for her daughters. In another narration actually, the Prophet ﷺ said, أعتقه الله من النار. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent her free from the fire. In another hadith, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let her enter Jannah by this action. It's a small action. Just give for your children, subhanAllah. And even that the Prophet Sallallahu said, in the Mu'min fi dhili sadaqatihi yawm al-qiyam. He's on, on the shade of his sadaq. It will cover him. The sadaq will cover him in the day of judgment. Kadarika tadfa'u mita su. It will avoid you to die in mita su. In a very bad way. Sometimes, if you pay the charity, it will lead you to die in a very good way. In a very good way. Which is Hasn al Khatim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless your sick that cure your sick people with the charity. It's a kind of cure.